so the usual review of the viewer pipeline. Uh, we have the same actors we've had for the last couple of weeks. The uh, VLC viewer that got a new update what was it, yesterday um, that fixed the uh, problem with setting the setting the volume slider to the maximum caused it to be silent, which was kind of awkward and hard to explain. Um, but that's fixed. And uh, well, there, there may be there may be other bugs, and we've had trouble reproducing yours, really. But um, uh, but that one, as far as we know, is in really good shape. It's uh, it's getting very good results in the RC channel, uh, and uh, we're feeling pretty good about it. So. Um, it's possible that that could be promoted to the default viewer next week if it continues to do well. We'll see. Uh, check back on Tuesday or so. The Bento viewer is also out in RC and just got an update today. That was the one I just got upgraded on, uh, which is why I was a little late. And that, too, is doing quite well. It had a crash that didn't belong there and that is fixed in this update. And it had uh, it also got a small improvement to mesh uploads, that, the details of which I'm afraid I don't have. Um, but uh, that, too, has been doing quite well in the RC channel. Um, and... We're feeling pretty good about it, so that could become the default viewer before too very long. Um, and there is a, uh, another maintenance RC viewer out there with a with a good collection of uh, assorted fixes in it. So those are the release candidates that are in the field at this point. They're all doing pretty well. Um, so. In theory, any of them could be next. Uh, un unlikely. Yeah, we really want to get the VLC out there. It's a security problem for Windows users to still have quick time. So we want to get that out and make that, make that the standard. Uh, and uh, that's, so that's pretty much the, 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 the pipeline behind those is 64-bit, which, as I mentioned last time, is um, sort of we're sort of paused for moving it over to our next generation build tools internally. We're touching practically everything involved in the in the pipeline for for building viewers, except the compilers this time. Uh, but that's going really well, um, and we expect to be produce, doing production builds of all the libraries next week. Those repositories are all public. You should be able to follow that work in Bitbucket. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll be producing some, some builds pretty soon. Uh, in fact, that is just pinging me that you got another library to build. So, uh, I don't plan on doing on uh, if if we can avoid it. I'm going to try to avoid upgrading to what's the next one is Visual Studio 2015 uh, or Xcode 8, um, and then we'll do those as a follow-on project rather than adding any more complexity to the 64-bit project. So our, our hope is to avoid, <laughs> as I said, we're changing everything but the compilers. I'd rather not make that. We're changing everything. So, um, however, the a big part of 
the point of this set of changes we're making is to make it easier to do rebuilding everything from scratch uh, and 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 more robust to do that since we've we've been beaten over the head with the fact that we have to do it every now and then. so uh, upgrading the the compilers in the follow-on project should be a, a little smoother than than any previous attempt to do it. <laughs> Um, and in fact, uh, the one change that you'll see externally is that all of our build scripts and auto build stuff will begin using a new capability in auto build, which is now as of just a few minutes ago, uh, at least semi-documented on the wiki page about auto build. So source environment is a command that's used is, is an auto build command that's used for customizing provi providing a bunch of platform specific capability um, in the build scripts that we use for the libraries and the viewer itself and what we've done is extended it to take an optional argument for a file full of variables uh, and variable assignments and a, and the and then it puts together the right set of switches depending on whether you're doing a debug or release build uh, based on those on that, those templates and gives you back a bunch of assignments. The point being that we can we can use that now to change that in just one place and it will be applied to all of the library builds and all of the and and the viewer build itself. Um, so uh, our viewer build variables repository is public and there's a pointer to it at the bottom of that wiki page um, so that documents how we're how we're going to be building everything um, the, the the contents of their apply to the 64-bit project uh, so you'll be able to see how we're doing it you can either use that if you want to be able to use our auto build packages in binary or if you think that we're making a terrible mistake with how we're doing the builds um, you can change them and we will accept contributions uh, and improvements to that file as well as to the rest of the viewer source tree so it is a separate repository so that it's easy to to uh, mix in with uh, all the builds of everything so um, of interest only to developers, but you'll start seeing that in our build scripts uh, when you start looking at the versions that are 64-bit compatible. So uh, you'll probably end up wanting to check out a copy of that repo and put it somewhere and point an environment variable at it, and then it'll just be implicit. Uh, so small change coming soon to a viewer build tree near you. Um, and then the other new thing we want to talk about, and Troy is here, I think. Troy, are you on the, the conversations list out there? Yeah, there you are. I, I am, I am. You are, you are. So Troy is here to talk about another fun project that we're getting started on. Well, actually, pretty far along on, but I'm going to be ready to start sharing with you any minute now. So go for it, Troy. All right. Thank you, Oz. Um, it's been a while since I've been to one of these uh, third-party view meetings, so uh, nice to see everybody. Um, yeah, so as Oz mentioned, we uh, have been busy working on a new feature. Um, it is called 360 Snapshot. So what is 360 Snapshot? Um, you guys may be familiar with a, a lot of these things with Google Cardboard, and um, uh, if you're on Facebook, you'll probably have seen all of these new images are sort of panoramic uh, images. In some cases, they're, and I'm, I know I'm going to get this wrong, equa, tr, equa rectangular, I believe is what they're coining it. Anyways, what it is is um, it's basically a 360-degree snapshot um, that you're able to kind of use your mouse, scroll around, and if it's mobile-enabled, you can uh, move your mobile device and it picks up the... Uh, the uh, gyroscopic tracking movements and it'll actually rotate around. So um, we are working on a feature that allows you to uh, set up a camera, a multi-camera uh, 
rig that takes a snapshot and it does a bunch of other stuff in the background um, that will output uh, a really nice looking image that you can then um, introduce to SL share that's at least our MVP that we're working towards now um, there may be other uh, use cases for it but for now we're gonna we're gonna kind of work towards that and um, should be really cool yeah so some of the things we've been playing around with um, some of the tests that I've been doing, it's really, really cool, especially because you can just drop it into a uh, place in your region and, um, you know, take a quick snapshot and off you go. We're, we're, we're trying to make it so that it's super simple um, and fast, but uh, as you can probably imagine, there's a quite a bit of um, stuff that it actually has to do in order to uh, to provide that, uh, that image. So we're working on it. Uh, can't really talk about uh, dates just yet, um, but, uh, so but yeah. we're going to be we're going to be producing a test build um, real soon. Now uh, we're we're working on it. It probably would have been done by now, except for um, we had the bugs in VLC to fix. Uh, but when we have the test build, you'll have a viewer that you can just um, go somewhere in world and stand where you want the center of the. 360 snapshot to be, and there will be a new option on the snapshot floater to take those. Um, yeah, we're we're not going to try to deal with video movies initially. Um, we're going to try for stills uh, as as the first cut. Uh, we want to be able to get it out in people's hands sooner rather than later. So. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're doing things a, a little bit at, at, at a time. Uh, we're also incidentally in that same build integrating, not incidentally, in fact, um, rather tardily, uh, integrating a bunch of other improvements to the snapshot floater that were done by Naran V for the, from the Black Dragon viewer. So we're, we're finally getting those integrated. Um, totally my fault that it hasn't been before now, but we're, we're getting it in. Uh, yeah, there are a couple of people that have been doing other, other attempts to do this in, in world. And, um, that's really terrific and inspirational. Um, what we're, what we're trying to do is build it into the, as an integrated capability in the snapshot, uh, pane in the viewer, and it'll be integrated with uh, other, other services that we have for, for using your snapshots. So, um, this first test version will just be uh, literally a test, right? The idea is to, it, it will not be, um, it will not be attempting to, um, provide a polished solution, which is our, the, that is our goal in the, uh, before we get to a release product. Um, but it will, it will give you, um, some idea of, uh, what the picture quality will be and will enable us to do experiments with that to determine just how much additional functionality we need to, to address. So there, there are a few challenges, as you can imagine. Uh, one is any fast moving objects or, um, one of the questions is whether, how, whether or not, uh, we, we need to be able to freeze the, the wind light effect so that things like moving clouds uh, are not disruptive. Um, I don't, we won't have that yet in this first test version. Um, so we may have some discontinuities. Um, <laughs> okay. You might want to drop a note to Callum about how to do that early, just because it would, it might be useful. But if, if we discover that that's disrupt, not doing that is disruptive, we'll, we'll integrate it into, um, the capability so that it's done for you automatically for the duration of taking the snapshot because you actually have to take, of course, multiple pictures. The other thing that we'll be trying to learn about is just how much this ends up interacting with the interest list from the simulator. Um, so whether or not we really can get complete images that are 360 degrees or whether the fact that the interest list hasn't updated things that are behind you causes problems. It's it's not entirely clear how serious an effect that's going to be. Uh, and we're going to do those experiments 
send me publicly. So we're going to have a test viewer that you can play with, and you can help us work out what circumstances uh, it works well in and what circumstances we need to still work on. Um, so <laughs> we we are not we are not talking about dates. Um, the the ultimate goal is that we will do the stitching for you. Um, that won't be true in the first test version. I think in the first test version, we'll we'll save something to the local disk. Um, and and yeah. Uh, but uh, ultimately, what we'll have is we'll we'll do the stitching for you and save it, um, where you can apply it to other things or download it. So, this is one of those things we're going to try to do very much in the open, um, and that means that you get to you get to see how the sausage is made. Um, so please, uh, please try to avoid judging it as a final product when it isn't, because it's not meant to be. Uh, we have not, we have not made any decisions about about resolutions yet. All right, Sam, uh, there was a question there about whether or not... There will be a limit of some kind, right? We just haven't <laughs> right. decided what it will be. Right. If, if there's anything we learned in Second Life, <laughs> is that there will be a limit of some kind. There was also a question whether or not the uh, end user will have access to the image output. Um, like it would be saved in the local file or something. Uh, yeah, that's one of the talking points that we're discussing now. So um, that is, as far as I can tell, looks looks good to be able to offer that. But we need to figure out, uh, we need to work out a, a few other things. But that is on the table. So it's a, a way cool new feature, and uh, you'll start seeing, uh, I think the first version we put out, we will not even be calling a project viewer because it won't be intended to be even that level of quality. So you'll have a test viewer out there somewhere, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll make it publicly available. And uh, of course, all the work on it will be done in a public repo. Yeah, we've we've seen some of the experiments other people have been doing, and it. it's it's quite inspirational. We'd we'd really like to help people to produce these things um, uh, directly and without without having a lot of know how. Right, the idea is to give you a a point and shoot interface. Yeah, floor is open.
I, th I think it would work in a VLC build, actually. I'm not either at the moment. Y'all are very quiet today. Do we all get to go home early? No. Um, Alice, have you done any work on the group notices or group chat lately or the ability to see moderators in groups? We have had some conversations about what we'd like to do, but we don't actually have anybody working on it at the moment. I think everyone is hypnotized by your picture. Uh, that is a beautiful picture, very beautiful picture. Uh, we are. Are there are there any plans to adjust the jelly thingy calculations? Um, we are going to be doing some careful measurements of what the impact of various newer features that were not necessarily properly accounted for in the way the rendering cost calculations work. Uh, and depending on the outcome of those experiments, we may or may not decide to change the formulas a little bit. I don't think that anything will be a dramatic change, but uh, we'll see. So we may have some we may have some adjustments to that. That's not going to be a super quick project just because there's a lot of uh, tedious running of many many tests and then more tedious number crunching before we can even start thinking about making changes to code. But uh, but I don't want anyone to think that we're not paying attention to the issue. We we definitely are, and we're spending time on it. I'm not, I'm not sure what Mr. 2004 implies, uh -huh. but we'll go with that. Uh, if, if there isn't a repo for that yet, there will be. And we'll make sure you hear about it, Wally. You don't need to. As soon as it's public, she'll see it. Yeah. I'm I'm not actually offhand sure where he's been doing that work. But not in a public repo. I guess not. We'll move it. Since we're talking about it.
Well, since um, since there was some mention about the snapshots, is there going to be any new filters added into the snapshots? I don't think we added any. No. Although you can add your own filters. I mean, that's already mm. that's already in. Yeah. I don't I don't think there were any new ones in what we integrated for Black Dragon. But it's possible. You're welcome to commit uh, to contribute yours, Worley, if you wrote them. I have no idea whether we want them or not. I'm not. That's not my. Not my thing. Well, I was thinking an artistic jitter within the snapshots would actually be a nice feature to add to the photo to the snapshot function. But we're we're be... not currently contemplating any additional transforms that you can do. Naran had some very cute ones in in his viewer. Did things like. I don't know, he had an Atari version that made everything into like look like it was built out of Legos or giant pixels. I don't know. That one's cool, Barley. I like that. Okay, well, if we haven't got new topics. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Uh, and my apologies to Izzy for landing on him again. Not a worry at all. Well, I'll just call it a polite griefing, Izzy. You, you like that photo, Worley? Because I took, I created that from a snapshot in Second Life. Kind of amazing considering that was taken from Second Life. Looks like a real life painting though. Or a painting that was done in real life.
But then again, I am painting in real life, so it could be a real life painting.